ہر مسلمان بخوبی اس سے واقف ہے کہ آج کی شہادت کا کیا فلسفہ ہے مسلمانوں کے لیے بالخصوص اور انسانیت کے لیے بالعموم یہ شہادت ان لوگوں کے لیے جو مظلوم ہیں ان کے لیے ایک بڑی اہمیت رکھتی ہے آج اس چیز کو مد نظر رکھتے ہوئے ہم نے اس پروگرام سے کمرشلز اور دوسرے میوزک بیک گراؤنڈ میوزک کو استعاری کیا ہے اور آج اس موضوع کے متعلق کچھ مہمان ہمارے ساتھ ایسے ہیں جو اس کے اوپر مزید وضاحت کریں گے میری بائیں طرف جناب طارق یوسف صاحب ہیں جو کہ مصر سے ہیں اور آپ افریقہ میں سعودی عرب کی طرف سے دہوا کے ہیڈ رہ چکے ہیں اور آپ جامع اظہر اور سعودی عرب کے اعلیٰ ریسرچ اسکالر ہیں اور اس کے میرے بائیں طرف دوسری طرف جو ہے وہ جناب اکرم زادہ صاحب تشریف رکھتے ہیں جو کہ اسلام میڈیا کے اور عرب ٹیلی ویژن آف امریکہ کے پریزیڈنٹ ہیں اور ہر یہاں پہ کمیونٹی کا فرد ان کی خدمات سے واقف ہے تو آج ہم ان سے یہ ان سے یہ بات کریں گے کہ امام حسین علیہ السلام کی شہادت کے فلسفہ کے متعلق روشنی ڈالیں تو چونکہ گفتگو کریں گے کیونکہ اردو زبان سے بات لفظ انگلش میں کہوں گا کہ ٹوڈے وی گیدٹ ہیئر آن دس ویری سیٹ کال دا ڈے آف اشورا دی مرٹن آف امام حسین علیہ السلام اینڈ وی گون ایسک بردر تھارک دیٹ کوڈ یو لیڈ ایس ایز ٹو وائی اینڈ واٹ فار دا کاز از دیٹ دس گریٹ ٹریجڈی ٹک پلیس ان دا پلین دا کربلا بردر تھارک في الواقع في الواقع مسألة الإمام الحسين عليه السلام كانت مصيبة فادحة بالإسلام والمسلمين والإمام الحسين عليه السلام في الحقيقة المفترض أنه لا ينتسب إلى الشيعة فقط بل هو ينتسب إلى جميع الأمة الإسلامية سنة وشيعة ولا ينبغي أن يذكر الشيعة الإمام الحسين وحدهم بل ينبغي على أهل السنة وأنا واحد منهم أن يذكروا ما حدث للإمام الحسين لأن الله قال في القرآن الكريم إن الذين يكفرون بآيات الله ويقتلون النبيين بغير حق ويقتلون الذين يأمرون بالقسط من الناس فبشرهم بعذاب أليم فالإمام الحسين عليه السلام كان من الذين يأمرون بالقسط من الناس ومن قتلوه قال الله عنهم فبشرهم بعذاب أليم أولئك الذين حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وما لهم من ناصرين. Uh, and the brother that uh, uh, could you say something in English also, you know, for the benefit of our people, because a lot of people do not understand the Arabic, you know, they should yeah. understand, but inshallah one day they will be able to understand it, you know. I try to uh, mention Imam Hussein. Uh, uh, I am as Sunnah. Actually, I am one of uh, a scholar of Sunnah. Uh, but unfortunately, we are as Sunnah. We don't mention Imam Hussein too much, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, uh, our ulama, uh, uh, they don't want to talk about this point too much. because we mention disaster of leaders of Islam. But our uh, 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 duty to mention that, to teach people what happened in our history, what is the, how we can't talk about son of daughter of the Prophet. One uh, 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 who mentioned uh, Prophet Muhammad said about him, he is the master of the youth in the Uh, paradise. Uh, this is Sayyid, Master. We must mention him and we mention, we, we must mention who kill him. Who kill him? We must mention him to teach our people what happened in our history. So, I wanted to talk about Imam Hussein according to uh, hadith of the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad said, <laughs> لا تقدس أمة أو إذا رأيت أمتي تهاب أن تقول للظالم يا ظالم فقد تودع منها If you saw our community, our أمة Don't see to the oppressor You are oppressor You are no any 
gain no any uh, 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 progress in this umma because they don't talk to the oppressor you oh you are oppressor so imam hussein according to this hadith go to 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 say to the oppressor you are oppressor you should stop you because you will spoil this umma so imam hussein his refusion to uh, to teach people how we can face the oppressors don't stay don't leave we will we will make many dictators in our in our society brother the oppression mm. the oppression went so far you know that they mutilated the bodies they trampled over under the feet of the horses and they took the 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 women of the ahlul bayt you know that they, without the headdress and they put them on the on the camels and make them travel in 1400 miles to the syria and ridicule uh, the the ahlul bayt and the ladies of the ahlul bayt when holy prophet said kullu as'alak mu'ajran illa mu'addatil fil qurba is this the mu'addat is this the love that they gave to ahlul bayt unfortunately uh, uh, we can't consider yazid is muslim we can't consider this man is muslim he is unmuslim many scholars of muslim in the history wrote against him even ibn kathir i think you know ibn kathir right. ibn kathir he, in his book al bidaya wal nihaya he mentioned about him he is not zindiq but he is fasiq Uh, 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 not only uh, Imam Qurtubi mentioned him how they can uh, or, or how Yazid in, in hereafter he will meet Prophet Muhammad after he destroy his family how he can meet him this Imam Qurtubi in his tafsir and uh, uh, not on uh, Nail al-Awtar al-Shawkani is the scholar is big scholar he mentioned he is drunk Yazid he was drunk Uh, he is not muslim at all uh, who who kill a family of the prophet and uh, imam hussein asked them please leave me to go to any place they refused and he put head of imam hussein and they play in his head in his mouth and somebody said to him how you talk like how you make i i saw the prophet many times to kiss this mouth how you can play like that on this mouth This this big disaster in our history. This man Yazid, we must curse him. Even Abu Farag Al Gauzi, big scholar from Salafi, he said we must curse this man Yazid. He is not Muslim in any way. He will enter. He will enter hell hundred percent. No way because he can. Uh, master of uh, of uh, youth of paradise. Not only he 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 kill. the last man of family of the prophet one of the four uh, of the five of uh, the people under the kisa imam ali and fatima and hasan and hussein and the prophet muhammad prophet muhammad put his his uh, clothes on them on his kisa his abaya and he said اللهم هؤلاء أهل بيتي فأذهب اللهم عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهير even أم سلمة his wife أم المؤمنين أم سلمة asked prophet محمد to go with them he refused he said to her you are on the خير but you are not one of family of the prophet even although he is she is good woman but she is not one of the family family of the prophet prophet محمد Uh, Sayyidah Fatima, Sayyidna Ali, Imam Al-Hassan, Imam Hussein, and the Prophet Muhammad described them are masters. Imam Hassan is master, but unfortunately Yazid, according to Ibn Kathir, Yazid order his wife, Ga'da bint Al-Ash'as ibn Qais, to put some in his, in his food to kill him. They said either Muawiyah order her or Yazid order her to kill Imam Hassan. And Imam Hussein, Yazid ibn Muawiyah order his people, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, to kill Imam Hussein. And even Umar ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Umar ibn Sa'd, according to Ibn Kathir, you can read Ibn Kathir to see how Umar ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas order his people, his army, to, to bring tenths of horse to destroy Imam Hussein after uh, they cut his head. According to Ibn Kathir, this is not Muslim at all. How we can describe these people, they are Muslim.
If they are Muslim, you are no Muslim on the land. Very, very true, brother, that I 100% mm. agree. And they, particularly, you know, that uh, when, you know, in your Salat, you know, we have to say the root on Ibrahim or Ali Ibrahim or Muhammad or Ali Muhammad, you know, how it is an obligatory upon every Muslim to love Ahlul Bayt, you know. And uh, now Brother Akramzada is with us, you know, that uh, and, uh, he's very much, uh, uh, you know, the acquainted with the, with the history. And I would like to ask Brother, you know, what was the historical perspective to that incident of tragedy of Karbala, you know, particularly, and what lessons can we draw from this tragedy? Uh, we have Sheikh Tariq. Thank you very much. Sheikh Tariq is a, uh, a scholar from Egypt and uh, has been researching uh, Islam uh, in many libraries and uh, even on the internet. I have known Sheikh Tariq for a number of months now and really he is very knowledgeable in these things. Uh, on the, uh, what he said that uh, it is not really uh, only during that time, but even in during our time, uh, as we know that uh, the history repeats itself. Uh, that time when Yazid was supposed to be a leader of the Muslim Ummah, what he did, of course, Sheikh Tariq said that, I don't want to uh, repeat what he said, then we as Muslim accepted him to be Khalifa and accepted Bani Umayyah to be Khalifa during many, many years. And during the Umayyad dynasty, Imam Ali, who said, uh, Sheikh Tariq, he's one of Ahlul Bayt and under the Kisa, he was cursed on the memory of Rasulullah for 75 years or more. Why? And nobody could object to that. Why? Because we Muslims <clears throat> don't really uh, understand uh, what to do. Or we have brainwashed, according to uh, our history, uh, brainwashed by those who uh, taught us things that we never try to uh, research. For example, uh, during uh, the reign of uh, the uh, Umayyad dynasty, there were so many uprisings, but these uprisings were all slashed down. Why? Because the wealth and the money and it was in the hands of the caliph. And we consider them that uh, uh, these caliphs supposed to do everything, while uh, the caliph actually is not something came from the prophet or from the god, but we put them or they came to uh, reign uh, in the history by mean of force or deception, just like Muawiyah. As you know, many Muslims, if you are not aware, see how Muawiyah become caliph after Imam Ali and what's the cause and about Al-Ash'ari and the other man who was sent by Muawiyah. It is a history in itself. There is no time to talk about it. But uh, I would like to tell my brother Muslims, think a little bit and read the history. Read the correct history. Don't read the history that has been written by, uh, as they call it, uh, the people who brought history through the uh, caliph or through those oppressors who rule the Muslim world by means of force and uh, bribery and what have you, like Yazid, for example. Uh, I would like to uh, refer to the uh, talk of uh, Sheikh Tariq, who said 
in many books even. Yeah, in short, the Islamic history, they are full of uh, <coughs> lessons to be learned, but uh, the main uh, objective of today's program is about uh, the uprising of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein, as we know it throughout the history, that was a must because to uh, tell the people, the rest of the people, that don't stay still but uh, object to anything which is wrong and uh, try to uh, speak out against evil because if you don't do that then we are to be uh, cursed by some other people because we didn't say that. Besides this, we Muslims who have to be united in all times we have to really think about each other positively. This, it hurts me, you know, when I see Imam Hussein massacred in Karbala, in a far away from his home, from uh, Medina and all these places where his grandfather, peace be upon him, the prophet was raised and uh, conveyed his message of Islam that he is, he was massacred by a Muslim. Yet the Muslim did not really try to understand this message. His family and all his descendants, what happened to them, it is probably, has, uh, you have heard it more than once. What I am trying to say here, please take notes, that we Muslims, have to be united. Why? When we see the Pope is kissing the rabbis, why can't we Muslim be united? No difference between Sunni, Shia, or whatever. Because Imam Hussein gave his blood to make a point, and the point upon us as Muslims to speak out against tyranny, well, against oppression, opponents, against all these evil things and falsehood. And Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have scholars like Sheikh Tariq, which really I uh, thank very much and uh, I am grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blessed us to have such a scholar in this part of the world, America or New York, and I really uh, try to uh, learn from him, and I ask my brothers in Islam to learn from him because he is more than knowledgeable in uh, Islam. Great, thank you, Brother uh, Akram Zada. Uh, Nazreen Jasaki Ab Jantim. ناظرین جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں کہ آج کی دنیا میں اسلام ایک بہت پرگریسیو ریلیجن ہے اور ایمان کے پلر میں سے ایک جہاد ہے اور جہاد کا ایک روشن منارہ شہادت امام حسین علیہ السلام ہے مغرب کے چند لوگوں نے اسلام کی ترقی کو روکنے کے لیے بڑی کوششیں کی ہیں اور آج بھی یہ کوششیں کر رہے ہیں کہ جہاد کو ساکت کر دیا جائے مسلمانوں میں کچھ ایسے لوگ ان کے ایجنٹ پائے جاتے ہیں جو جہاد کی اہمیت کو گھٹانے کے لیے پرزور کوششیں کر رہے ہیں امام حسین علیہ السلام کی شہادت جہاد کی طرف ترغیب دیتی ہے اور کچھ لوگ ایسے ہیں جو اس شہادت کو ڈی ایم فیسائز کرتے ہیں ہمیں یہ چاہیے کہ ہم حق کو حق سمجھیں اور شہادت امام حسین سب کا یہ ورثہ ہے اور یہ امام حسین علیہ السلام مشترک ہے ہم سب لوگوں کے لیے اور ان کی قربانی کی وجہ سے ہمیں یہ چاہیے کہ وہ سپیرٹ قائم کریں جو ہم برائیوں سے چھٹکارہ حاصل کر سکیں اور نیکیوں کی طرف راگب ہو سکیں اور حق کی شہادت کو ہمیشہ مد نظر رکھیں کیونکہ قرآن پاک کی روح سے ہر وہ شخص 
جو شہادتوں کو چھپاتا ہے وہ اپنے دل کا مجرم ہے اور جو شخص دل کا مجرم ہو اس کے اندر ایمان ساقت قرار نہیں کرتا نہیں ہو ایمان ساقت ایمان قرار نہیں پا سکتا تو اللہ ہمیں توفیق دے کہ ہم حق کو حق کہیں اور کچھ لوگوں نے امام حسین علیہ السلام کی اس واقعے کربلا کی ٹریجڈی کے بعد جو ہے وہ اتنا ایک اور ظلم کا تیر چلایا اور وہ یہ انہوں نے یہ اس کی یزید کی معصومیت کے دعوے کیے اگر یزید کی سچویشن کو دیکھنا ہو اور اس کی مینٹیلٹی کو دیکھنا ہو تو اس وقت شام کے دربار میں دیکھیں جب امام حسین علیہ السلام کا سر مبارک تشت پہ رکھا ہوا ہے اور یزید اس کے اوپر جو ہے وہ اپنی ایک چابک سے ان کے منہ کے اوپر جہاں رسول اللہ جو ہے وہ چوما کیا کرتے تھے ان کے کانوں کے اوپر ان کے سر کے اوپر اور وہ بدستور اس چابک کو مار رہا ہے اور یہ کہہ رہا ہے کہ کوئی یہ بنی ہاشم کا یہ ڈنگ حوصلہ تھا کوئی رسول اللہ پہ وہی نازل نہیں ہوئی ہے جی آج میرے آبا و اجداد زندہ ہوتے تو ان کو یہ پتہ ہوتا کہ میں نے بدر کا اور عہد کا کیسے بدلا لیا تو اس سے یزید کی مینٹیلٹی کا پتہ چلتا ہے وہ دین اسلام سے خارج تھا امام حسین علیہ السلام نے سنت رسول اللہ کو زندہ کیا اور سنت رسول اللہ کی زندہ کرنے کے لیے یہاں تک قربانی دی کہ اپنے ششمہ بچے کو قربان کر دیا اور اہل بیت کی تطہیر والی اور عورتیں اور خاتون جو تھیں بغیر پردے کے شام کے بازاروں میں خطبہ دیتی رہیں یہ ہماری اہل بیت کی عورتوں کی یہ جتنی بھی قربانیاں تھیں اور جتنا بھی یہ انہوں نے ایثار کیا یہ اس لیے کیا کہ ہم ہدایت پا جائیں اگر اس قربانی کے باوجود بھی ہم آپس میں اکٹھے نہیں ہو سکتے ہم دین کا نام روشن نہیں کر سکتے تو امام حسین علیہ السلام کی قربانی جو ہے وہ ہمارے کام نہیں آئے گی اور ہمیں یہ چاہیے کہ ہم اس سے سبق سیکھیں اور اس سے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کو کو راضی کریں اور جس اگر وہ راضی ہوں گے تو اللہ بھی ہم سے راضی ہوگا اور اب آخر میں میں امام آئی ول ایسک امام طارک ٹو کنکلوڈ دس تھنگ ود دا پریئر سو دیٹ وی کین گیٹ یونائٹیڈ اینڈ وی شوڈ انجوائے from this uh, we enjoy from this event in such a way that we get united so that this sacrifice is not wasted please brother uh, actually we 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 want to uh, uh, surround the ignorance uh, uh, some people want us to uh, uh, divide us or destroy our unity through their ignorance uh, i call leader of pakistan and i call 99% from Pakistanis to surround the ignorance. The ignorant. Because no problem if Muslim uh, 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 take uh, uh, position against Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar. I, I, I am as Muslim, I, I, I support Abu Bakr and Umar. But if somebody doesn't support Abu Bakr and Umar, this means he, he is still Muslim. What is the problem? Even Sayyida Fatima, I, I talk with my people now as, as Sunnah, I talk with them. Read the Bukhari, you can find out how Sayyida Fatima refused to give bay'ah to Abu Bakr. And uh, she said he doesn't, she doesn't want Abu Bakr to pray when she died. What is the problem? Nobody knows until this minute, nobody knows where is the grave of Sayyida Fatima actually. Where exactly nobody knows because Sayyida Fatima refused Abu Bakr and Omar. Nobody claim Sayyida Fatima is not master of women in the paradise because she doesn't like Abu Bakr or, or she doesn't support Abu Bakr. What is the problem? If enemies of Islam against Abu Bakr and Omar and against Ali even, no, Enemies of Islam against all Muslims. Don't allow enemies of Islam to push you to kill Sunnah or to kill Shia. Try to understand what is the plan of their minds. They try to destroy us through discrimination, not by color, by madhab. Alhamdulillah, Sunni and Shi, both are the Muslims. Uh, both of them, this is Sunni. If you support Abu Bakr, you say, Allah, la ilaha illa huwa, and Muhammad is a prophet. And you pray five times daily, and you fast one month. And even Shia, they pray five times. Uh, if in three times, but five times, uh, uh, they, they take the same direction. The same Bible, the same Quran. They, go the same to, they read the same Quran, and they support most of companion of the Prophet. What is the Prophet if he see a family of the Prophet better than anybody? Every Muslim must say, family of the Prophet better than anybody in this community. Is because we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. 
First of all, Prophet Muhammad. Second, the family of the Prophet. According to our tashahud, if you somebody say, I am a support Imam Ali, I support family of the Prophet. All Sunnah support Imam Ali and support family of the Prophet according to the Quran, the, the, the prayer according to the tashahud. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Respect your brothers, Shia brother, because he love family of the Prophet like you. Don't allow anybody destroy this society, this unity, because Abu Bakr and Omar. If you love Abu, like Abu Bakr and Omar, love him, love them, no problem. But don't consider anybody, uh, consider Imam Ali better than them or, brother, or family of the better than them. Your his enemy is he's, he's still Muslim, but he loves the family of the Prophet. Like you, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. This means if you try to think about this boy, you will know family of the Prophet. The second after the Prophet, you can't consider anybody after the Prophet except his family first. Ashram. If you consider any thought. Again, is this point? Try to think. Our, our uh, uh, try to think in your belief, in your faith. How you say every time, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, and you consider everybody say uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad his family better than anybody. I'm not Muslim. You don't know what do you say in your prayer, brother, sister, Muslim and Shia. Try to stop your enemies. Your enemy try to destroy you. Leave Shi'i, leave Sunni, and all of us we can become one unity if we love family of the Prophet Muhammad. Ma <laughs> uh, and, and one thing else I want to add that al Muslim man salam al nasu min yadihi wa lisani. The Muslim, the one that he is not uh, hurt by. A Muslim through the action or through the tongue. Therefore, uh, the enemies of Islam always trying throughout the history, trying to separate between the Muslim because if they uh, know that the Muslim get together together, they are going to uh, uh, be all over the world with unity and going to overcome other uh, uh, cultures, maybe other. Uh, societies maybe other I don't want to explain more but we have to keep the unity of Islam according to our religion to Quran Sunnah or whatever you want to consider and, thank and you. Thank even you. even thank even you, uh, even you, you read uh, in, 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 in the books of uh, Sunnah books you can find how Omar said to Imam Hussein when Imam Hussein uh, 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 draw him right. on the member when and he said uh, why you stay in, in, in the member on, uh, 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 of yeah, my, my, my grand uh, uh, mother, grandmother uh, my jaddi mm -hmm. how you stay uh, 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 Sayyidina Umar said to him I can't stay in this place because of your grand your god and you if you are not or your God, I am not here. Subhanallah. Yeah, this is Omar. And the, you, uh, we are we, we are Muslim because of the Muhammad and his family. Right. Mashallah. 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 He was. He, as a matter of fact, you know, the Tumar has a lot of respect for Imam Ali, and uh, once he said, you know, that if uh, Ali, if you were not here, then we would be banished. Right. So the, the Ali exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's it. Anyhow, so, uh, thank you very much, brother. For thank you very much, brother. For here. Thanks a lot. And thank the brothers, and I hope they uh, really uh, try to go to the history and uh, learn about the unity of Islam. Because what happened, the Kafir and the uh, and the people that you know trying to especially in Pakistan because Pakistan is becoming a power and therefore the outsiders you know the Kafirs and those enemies of Islam trying to divide Pakistan to weaken Pakistan as a, as a matter of fact so, you know that uh, I have mentioned many times you know that the uh, that according to the strategist here in Washington DC they have decided and they have actually forecasted you know that there will be only 
four big major powers in another coming 20 years, you know, and that they want it, that, you know, that the, and these four, other than America, these, most of these powers are in East, and then they're very afraid, you know, that if Muslims get together, they will be superpower, and whoever the superpower has the more resources, they have a better defense, and then what's going to happen is that their culture, their religion is going to spread all over the world. In order to stop that culture and religion of Islam, right, they have decided that we should go there and divide the people and destroy their infrastructure so, they have, so that they have no law and order. And if there is no law and order, there will be no growth, and this cannot become a superpower or industrial base, you know. Sure. The whole thing is, you know, that their efforts is to destroy this thing. And in order to do that, you know, they have decided that we must uh, try to promote the Chinese, the Sinni culture, and the Hindu culture. That's why, you know, they are loving Hindus, going back to India, you know, right, trying to have the provocation, you know, that uh, on the borders and everything else, you know, right. And in the name of democracy, you know, they are trying to put, split the people in Pakistan, you know, and in the name of religion and the sectarian violence, you know, they are killing each other, you know. They are, as a matter of fact, you know, supporting the cause of shaitan. And as a matter of fact, they are not connected with the Muslim people. All ulama in Pakistan, their ulama are very good in Pakistan, Sunnis and Shiites, both of them, you know, right? and Ahlul Hadith, you know, right? I met many ulama from Ahlul Hadith, Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Tashahid, and they have this spirit, you know, they want to work together. But unluckily, these people, some ignorant, they don't want to hear their own ulama, you know. But what we need is that these ulama should get together and that they should work in Pakistan and they should make sure that the Sunnah of Rasulullah will ever be there all the time and we should defeat the enemies of, uh, of Islam. And this is the very lesson that Imam Hussain tried to teach us in his martyrdom, you know, in the plains of Karbala. Thank you. Thank you.